This is Impact Wrestling's Eddie Edwards, and you are watching Ambi, where anything is possible. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Eddie Edwards. Hello, how Hello. are you? I'm awesome, how are you doing? Good, very happy to be here, finally. I know, we're so excited to have you. We are here in Niagara at CWF, where you are soon going to be stepping into the ring. How are you feeling about everything that's about to go down? Uh, you know, I'm tonight, unfortunately, I'm a little injured. I uh, have a bit of a rib injury tonight, so... Uh, I believe I'm going to be a special guest referee. Okay. Yeah, so uh, a little unfortunately. change of pace? Yeah, a little change of pace. Just yeah, we'll try my hand out that, you know. We've all, we've all watched referees and we all get mad at referees. So I'm going to feel, I'm going to be in their shoes tonight and see how I can do. <laughs> I'm good at counting to five usually, so I can do the breaks in the corners and all that stuff. I'm going to call it down the middle. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to feel it out there. Maybe that's my next career. I, I may move on to that next. It's going to be interesting to see how much heat you get. <laughs> yeah, hopefully none. <laughs> Well, I absolutely love your slogan, Anything is Possible. Thank I you. was wondering, is that something that you've always lived by? Yeah, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, I think it's just a good attitude to have in general. But especially like uh, with Impact when I won the world title, and it was kind of like, you know, that was a surprise moment for myself, and I think for a lot of fans it was. And I go back to, I'm a big Boston Celtics fan, and Kevin Garrett, basketball player, when they won the world title, I remember him just shouting out, anything is possible, you know, the top of his lungs, and that just kind of, it's always stuck with me. Anytime I hear somebody say anything is possible, that's the that's what comes <laughs> up. And, like, you know, I, I, at the time I was kind of away from Davey where he was hurt, so I was doing my own thing, and, you know, I kind of needed my own, my own stuff to try to, you know, separate myself when he was hurt and stuff. So it's something that I have always believed in, and I wanted to just try to help promote because... You know, I, I've, I've always been an underdog type, you know, in, in wrestling. And I think uh, that's, if I have a connection with fans, that's what it is, being an underdog. So I want to help show them that a anything is possible. I never thought I would be world champion of Impact Wrestling, but I did it because anything is possible. And just speaking to Impact Wrestling, you recently shared how you're not going to stop until you have that championship again. <laughs> so is there anyone standing in your way you're a little bit worried of? Because this is a really stacked roster right now. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, it's an exciting time for Impact. You know, there's a lot of new talent coming in. And of course, the guys that have been there uh, for a while now. It's a, uh, it's like you said, it's a stacked roster, and I, you know, nobody's standing in my way. I, I, I just wanna, I just wanna get the opportunity to to hold that belt again, to to be the man carrying Impact on my shoulders. You know, I think it's just a matter of time before I get my shot again. So, stay tuned. For me, I had absolutely loved the angle where the American Wolves had split. And, of course, you had Alicia by your side. I know it's so sad still. It really is. And then Davey had Angelina by his side. Just I was wondering, how weird did that split feel for you? Was it still a little bit weird? Yeah, you know, I think as tag team wrestlers, you kind of, you know that down the road, there's probably going to be something where you guys have to split. You know, like, but me and Davey took pride in being a true tag team and not not being like just two guys that were put together. We were like a legit tag team, a cohesive unit with chemistry that we couldn't even we couldn't even try to create. And we it wasn't like played. it was a short run either. No, no, and you know, and like when we first tagged from the first match to our last match together, our chemistry improved every match somehow. Like and it just got to a point where he knew what I was thinking, I knew what he was thinking. So like we took pride in being a tag team, you know, that represented tag team wrestling. We wanted to revive and revitalize tag team wrestling. So um, a couple times uh, breaking up had come up and, you know, we we're always kind of, you know, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. But then, you know, when the time comes, you know, you're going to do it. And, you know, we did it. And I'm happy with the turnout of how it did come, you know, how it turned out. And I'm happy that, like you said, I got to have my wife by my side, which is a very unique thing. And he got to have his wife by his side. So, um, I'm happy with what we did, but of course it's still, still it still hurts. still hurts that we broke up, <laughs> that he turned his back on me. You and your wife, of course, share wrestling in common, but I was wondering, what is a night off like when you're not thinking about wrestling? Is that pretty rare for you? Uh, you know, during the you know during the week, uh, usually there's no wrestling shows during the week and stuff like that. If we're not filming anyway, so you know we just like we we cherish our time at home. Like when we're at home, it's not about wrestling. It's not you know thinking about wrestling all the time. Of course, it is sometimes you get stuck in that mode. But we like to just chill out and we like to sit on our couch and watch movies and watch TV. We like to go out to eat and stuff like that. Like aside from wrestling, we're pretty normal, <laughs> functional you know relationship. I, I husband and wife. I would I would like to believe we we enjoy our time together, and. Uh, 
you know, being away, like I try, I have been traveling a lot and she's been home, you know, more so. And I go away for a few weeks at a time going to Japan and stuff like that. So when I do get home, it's like, just drop everything and let's just chill out. Let's just enjoy it. Let's Netflix and chill as the kids say, <laughs> you know, so we, we cherish that time together. You mentioned Japan there, and there was a really great tweet regarding Japan that you sent out that caught my eye, and it was, I hope one day in Japan, instead of streamers being thrown in the ring, I have strong zeros thrown, or nicely placed on the ring apron. Yes. Out of all things, uh, yes. strong zeros. Strong zeros. I, you're familiar with strong zeros? I had to look it up. I didn't know what oh, it was. They, They're like drinks. It's the best alcoholic drink you'll ever have. Um, it's <laughs> like, you know, anytime foreigners go over there, like, you can buy them in the convenience stores, all different flavors, apple, put, there's now pineapple, grape, like, lemon, lime. And like, they're like you know, nine. I'm not. I'm not advocating underage drinking. Twenty one or over. Uh, it's like nine percent alcohol and like hardly any calories or something. So we all stock up on them. We don't have them in the state. So we. I tend to bring some back home and stuff. So that's my dream. I don't want streamers. I just want them to come up and just <laughs> line up all different flavors of strong zeros you on the ring. Pick. Yeah, exactly. And I'll just <laughs> thank you, and I'll just take them and put them in a cooler in the back, and I'll share. I'll share them with everybody. I promise I will. Um, but you need to get your hands on them at some point. <laughs> they, you won't forget it. Well, I recently interviewed Zach Sabre Jr., and he told me this incredible story about how the two of you went to do some karaoke, and it uh, had an interesting run at the end of it. And he wanted me to bring it up if I ever had the chance to speak with you. Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny because uh, Japan, you know, I, I associate, and many people do associate it with karaoke because you go over there and you're going to end up doing karaoke whether you want to or not. You're gonna just going to do karaoke, karaoke, karaoke. And, yeah, me and him... I, we've done it a couple times, but there's been the time that he mentioned where we were just, I don't, I mean, I'm sure it's a combination of some alcohol and we're not very good singers in general. So basically any song that we were singing was pretty awful. But I remember, and I tweeted this after you guys, uh, you tweeted out the interview that I recall us actually me in my phone, I was writing down notes like, oh, that's it. We did good on that song. Let's remember that for next time. <laughs> and I was like having a list of songs. <laughs> Like, okay, now we're going to have our go-to. We're going to have a set. Yeah. It's like a band having a set. Like, we're going to have this. We're going <laughs> to nail it next time. And then I don't think the next time ever came. So hopefully at some point we yeah. get to do it again. I don't have the note. I wish I still had. I was going to say, that. do you know who was on the list? I don't, One of the I don't remember at all. It was uh, just a couple of random ones. And you're like, wow, we did good. Let's, let's do that again next time. <laughs> But then next time never came. Oh, that's sad. I think next time we have you two together, if there's ever the chance, just, I am bringing a karaoke yeah. machine. I will find I will do that. Go-tos. I will do that. I will do that. I promise. <laughs> was on the music front, I was wondering if you could have any band write an entrance for you. Who would you love to see do so? Oh, man. Uh, any band. You know, I'm like, I, I'm a fan of like old school gangster rap. Me too. So like if I... Uh, Easy E, like if Easy E could create entrance music for me, that would be obviously you can't now, but that would be my dream because I, he's probably my favorite artist of the past and present right now. Really? Yeah, I'm a big fan of like NWA and gangster rap like that. So if NWA could do it, Ice Cube or Easy E, you know that that would be my dream come true. Would you say you're a decent rapper when you're singing along? With oh, when I sing or... along with it, yeah, of course. You are okay. Come on. I didn't know. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like to tell myself, I am in my car when I'm driving. I'm very good. You just get into it. Yeah, There's no I'll, stopping anyone. Oh, no. I, I I remember one time I was driving my, my car, and I was easy. It was blasting, and I was singing, and I look out the window, and the guy's just like, yeah. I was like, <laughs> he gets it. He knew. He felt it. I just had to blast, and he, he, I was like, respect. Huh? I love that. Yeah. <laughs> well, strap things up. Is there anything you would like to leave with your fans who will be viewing? Any parting words? Uh, I just want to say, you know, to the fans, that just thank you for supporting me. You know, wrestling is all about the fans, and we couldn't do it. I wouldn't be able to do what I do. I wouldn't be able to travel. I wouldn't be able to do this interview without the fans. So thank you, and, you know, like as we discussed, just keep in mind that anything is possible. Get the, See the hat, AIP, check it out, and uh, follow me on Twitter, at the Eddie Edwards, and uh, that's it. And there's no Facebook. It's always fake. Instagram, fake. <laughs> Stay away. Fake. Until I get one. But yeah, that's it. It is in the signature, only Twitter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Read it. Read it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. I appreciate it. And remember to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See ya.